The Double Jeopardy Clause says that a defendant can't be tried twice for the same offense. But what if the defendant's conviction has been set aside by a reviewing court for insufficient evidence? Does a new trial involve double jeopardy? The United States Supreme Court faced this question in the 1978 case, Burks v. United States. David Wayne Burks was tried for armed bank robbery in federal district court. Burks raised an insanity defense and called three expert witnesses for support. All three testified that Burks suffered from a mental illness at the time of the robbery and that this made him substantially incapable of conforming his conduct to the law. To rebut this evidence of insanity, one of the government's experts testified that Burks had a character disorder, not a mental illness. The government's other expert agreed that Burks had a character disorder, but gave an ambiguous answer when asked whether Burks was capable of conforming his conduct to the law. Lay witnesses also testified that Burke seemed perfectly capable of normal functioning and was sane at the time of the robbery. Before the case went to the jury, Burke's moved for a judgment of acquittal. The district court denied the motion, and the jury found Burke's guilty as charged. Burke's then moved for a new trial on the ground that the evidence against him was insufficient. The district court denied that motion as well, and Burke's appealed to the Sixth Circuit. It found that Burks had made a prima facie showing of insanity and that the government had failed to come forward with sufficient evidence to rebut that showing beyond a reasonable doubt. The Sixth Circuit reversed Burks's conviction, but instead of terminating the case against Burks, it remanded the case to the district court to decide whether to enter a directed verdict of acquittal or order a new trial. The United States Supreme Court granted cert.